So we've been going through a little video series here talking about the matrix and how it parallels to Vedantic knowledge, which also, interestingly enough, parallels to what a lot of the modern physicists are saying. Uh, we'll do another uh, video series on Einstein quotes, and we'll see how Einstein was onto this stuff, but from a very different perspective, uh, from a very different approach, the approach of Western science as opposed to the approach of ancient Vedic wisdom, you see? So one aspect um, that's touched upon lightly, in, uh, but, but well, in the Matrix series, in the Matrix movie, uh, is when he talks about free will and uh, versus predetermination. You know, are you free? If I pick my hand up here, was that free or was it predetermined? Philosophers debate that, you know. Uh, the idea of predetermination is that it's like if you have a billiard table and billiard balls on it, you roll a billiard ball and you could calculate the spin on the ball, the speed, the elasticity of the, of the cushions and know exactly where that ball is going to end up if you had a big enough computer. And the idea then is that this whole universe is just one big, huge billiard ball, uh, billiard table. And all the protons, neutrons, electrons are all billiard balls, so everything is predetermined. If you had a big enough computer, you could calculate what's going to happen next. You could know and it'd be predetermined that I was going to lift my hand right now. The other idea is free will. Do we have free will? Um, it's, it's a rather deep question. I give a series of lectures on it, but to say it in a nutshell, Heisenberg, Uncertainty Principle in Physics, says that all these billiard balls of protons, neutrons, and electrons aren't balls. They're probability clouds. There's a freedom there, you see, of where that billiard ball appears. So, and that is where free will comes from. And if you, boy, if you get that, it's huge because we don't realize as a common knowledge that human awareness has the depth and the ability to function on that level of Heisenberg, of quantum mechanics. Some uh, physiologists are studying that. Heisenberg uncertainty principle and quantum mechanical mind. Uh, but think about it. If you can function from that level that lies beyond the matrix, beyond illusion, illusion, beyond the field of Maya, they call it, and you can function from that level, that's called freedom. Freedom from predetermination, you see? So our lives are an amalgam, combination of two different things. The predetermined world and the, the, the world where you are free to raise your hand or not. And the degree to which you are free is determined not by an attitude. Oh, I'm going to be free and I'm going to rebel. No, 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 no. That's predetermined. You say it can be. But it's a, it's a function of how evolved you are to function from that place that lies beyond the matrix. To function from that place that lies beyond the world of Maya. To the idea then, they say, to be in the world but not of it. To be in the world but not lost to it. To function within the world but not to be overtaken by the predetermined nature of the world. As I think it was Ramana Maharshi said, to have your boat in the water but not have the water in your boat. You see? So, uh, this is interesting. Morpheus says to uh, Neo, he says, do you believe in fate, Neo? And Neo says, no. Morpheus says, why not? <laughs> and Neo says, because I don't like the idea that I'm not in control of my life. Now, if you really think about it, that's a ridiculous, <laughs> it's an understandable response, but it's a ridiculous response. I don't believe it because I don't want to. I'm not going to look at the nature of life because the nature of life isn't what I want to think the nature of life is. So I'm going to ignore that. You know, ignore the man behind the curtain kind of idea. So it's, it's, but it's epidemic. People don't want to hear it. They don't want to believe it. You see? They want to believe that the matrix is real. You see? <laughs> so it's just, it's great, you know? And it so beautifully speaks to Vedantic knowledge. I'd love to know if the guy who wrote the matrix uh, was on to Vedantic knowledge. Or if, like many of the uh, science fiction authors who just from deep within their own being come up with this stuff and it turns out to be true 
you know, in 10, 20, 50, 100 years. Why? Because there's that inner knowing, you see? Uh, oh, so then there's a real fun thing in there when uh, Neo goes and visits the Oracle. And uh, so he's standing in the kitchen, you know, I think she's baking cookies or something, and she says, uh, she's something to the effect that, oh, by the way, don't worry about that vase. And then uh, a second later, Neo turns around, knocks a vase on the ground, and breaks it. And he says, oh, oh, I'm sorry. And she says, I told you not to worry about the vase. And he was like, did, you know, did you know that I was going to knock that vase? How did you? She says, oh, she's don't, she says, don't worry. She says, what's really going to bake your noodle is, is when you think about this, you know, you're going to wonder, if I didn't say anything, would have you broken the vase? But you see, that's all beautifully connects to this idea of free will versus predetermination. Was he free or was his action predetermined? And then the question comes up, if she didn't say anything, would, would it, that have been a component in predetermination? Or is she coming from a place of freedom so she could affect the world of cause and effect by not saying something, you see? So, or saying something, you see? So it's, it's a... It's a <laughs> It's a very beautiful play on a, on a very profound concept of free will versus predetermination and how all that works. So The Matrix is, ah, it's, a great, it's a great movie really in that sense. It takes these profound principles from Vedantic knowledge that, that corresponds so beautifully to, to many of the notions of modern physics. And it brings it out in a really beautiful story that doesn't just talk about it intellectually, but sort of gives the viewers an experience that, oh my gosh, when they walk out of that movie theater, it's like, this is a matrix. It is the field of Maya, you see?